receiving the word of God for what it is, and then all of a sudden somebody comes along and does it, that, that just causes a division between me and them. Yep. Because they favor their Bible more than they do what the word means in that Bible. And I found out even with the King James Version, you've got to find some kind of a dictionary to find out what they're talking about. Had, had a, somebody argued with me one time about, well, the Bible didn't say nothing about drugs. The Bible don't say nothing about drugs. It does, but it don't come out and say drugs. No. It, it don't use the word drugs. It uses a word that, that and, and the word that, is, that it uses is pharmaca, which means pharmaceuticals. In, and and, and pharmaca is the Greek word for sorcery. Sorcerer would make a potion that would make you feel something that you normally would not feel. But the Greek word for sorcery is pharmaca. Meaning pharmaceutical. I'm not talking about prescription drugs that the doctor gives you to take for your blood pressure. I'm not talking about what they give you for your diabetes. I'm not talking about what they give you for your heart. I'm talking about what these junkies out on the street is selling you, trying to kill you with. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. There's stuff out there on the streets that the, the young people are dying by the dozen. That's what I'm talking about. So not all, not everything in, in the King James Version means what it says. You have to look up what that word means. If you're going to do a Bible study, you need to really study that thing. That's why I like some of the American Standard Versions and, and, and some of the plain English versions because it brings out what God's trying to tell you. It brings you closer to God. A lot of times you can read it, and, and as you're reading it, and, and while ago when I said, let us make man in our own image, you could have automatically thought, oh, he's talking about creating Adam. you got to look farther than Adam. you got to look to now. When he said, I put you in charge over the land, and I put you in charge over the beast, and I put you in charge over the fish, and, and I put you over char in charge over the birds. And there, when he was saying that, he was saying that I'm putting you here to take care of things. Adam's no longer here. But we are. So the body, there should not be no division. And, and I don't care if, it, if it's the first church of the missionary Baptist or, or the free will Baptist or, 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 or the, the Christian Baptist, whatever, whatever it is. I don't care what your name on the door is. It's what is the name on your heart. Amen. You know, me and my Baptist brothers, we can see people get saved just the same as me and my Pentecostal brothers. But when my uncle used to ask me all the time, what church are you at? What Bible do you preach from? You know, if it's not a King James Version Bible, then you're not preaching the Word of God. If you, you need to get into a good Baptist Bible-believing church. Why does it got to be a good Baptist Bible-believing church? Why couldn't it be a good Pentecostal Bible-believing church? Why couldn't it be a good Methodist Bible-believing church? Why did it necessarily have to be Baptist? You're wrong. You're, you're, you're wrong. I said, well, I'm non-denominational. I'm not Baptist. I'm not Methodist. I'm not Pentecost. I'm not this. I'm a child of God, poor in blood pot by Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm on my way to heaven because what he did and not what I can do. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, man, and Pat Paul was always Baptist. I said, well, I know they always went to a Baptist church. But I tell you what, I remember camp meetings down in the bottom and, and there was like seven Baptist churches in there. And that's another question I got. Why they got to have seven of them in the same neighborhood? If they're all Baptists, why they got seven of them right here in a row? Why didn't they all just come together and work together? Because it becomes a, a number of things. Well, my mom and dad helped build that church years ago, and I'm going to go to that church, and that's where I'm going to go, and that's where my kids are going to go. And if I got anything to say about it, that's where my grandkids will go. That's tradition. That's separation. That's dividing who we are. Right. 
You believe the same thing as the church down the road just half a mile. You all believe the same way. Why do you got to have two separate churches? I know what one time, one Sunday of the month, they used to go to one church and everybody would fellowship together. And then on another Sunday of the month, they would go to the other church, whichever one went that time. Then that church would come this time. And then they would do that. But in the tent revival, they had a big tent revival out in the bottom there in Stop Rock. And there was like seven churches. And they were all supposed to be Baptists. And they all came together. And I loved it. I'm talking about you. I mean, you have never seen such a great revival. Some of you made pin in them before. Outside tent revivals, they find a, a bottom somewhere in a field and they set up a tent and, and you get all the churches in the area would come out and they would forget about the name on the door. You didn't have just Suzanne Missionary Baptist Church. You didn't have just Valley Decision Baptist Church. You didn't have Pleasant Valley Baptist Church. You didn't have Eden Baptist Church. You didn't have Roach Baptist Church. You had all the churches that was in the area that would pull together and they all get out there and they begin to worship God and they would preach the word and they would all and all the choir members of every church was getting up and singing. I'm talking about you, you ain't seen such a good church service until all of them could come together. This church, not just I'm not talking about this this building, this, these people. I'm talking about this church of today. If we could all just get together and be the body of Christ that we're supposed to be, be the image that we're supposed to be, and forget about our area, forget about our community, forget about the name of the, the church, on the, the name on the door of the church, and come together and say, hey, we're going to worship God, we're going to praise God, we're going to lift up God, we're going to edify one another, we're not going to kick each other down. We're not going to try to bear each other. We're not in this thing for competition. We're in this thing for the kingdom of God. I'm all about numbers, but not for numbers in the pew, but for numbers that's going to reach the kingdom someday. Amen. 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 I see my grandmother and her sister both, both of them born and raised all their life in a Baptist church. <coughs> Get up. When the music would start, and I'd sit there, all of a sudden they'd take off running around the tent with their hands in the air, their heads start back. I don't know how they didn't knock somebody over or trip on something. They're running around that tent yelling and shouting and praising God. And guess what? That wasn't a Pentecostal thing. That was a God thing. That was a Holy Ghost thing. That was letting go of what you think. Letting go of whatever you've been taught. And allow the Holy Spirit Amen. take control of your mind. Amen. Change your thinking. So if there's not supposed to be a division, why is there a division? And we're supposed to be the body of Christ. My goodness. Now I'm going to jump down a little bit. In verse 27. <coughs> well, verse 26. And whether one body suffer all the members, suffer with it. If one of your members is suffering, you suffer with it. If one of your members is going through a struggle, you go through a struggle. If one of your members is mourning, you mourn. If one of your members is being afflicted, it ought to afflict you. You ought to be able to carry their burden. You ought to be able to feel what they're feeling. I tell you what, sometimes as a pastor, man, you might think, well, he's insensitive. No, I'm not insensitive. Believe me, my heart gets burdened. I can't show it all the time. There's things that goes on I can't let you see. No matter what news I've got, no matter what I've heard, no matter what I've been through, no matter what I've witnessed, I can't show you. That I can bear that burden to the Lord in prayer. Amen. And sometimes the burden so bad and everything, I can feel it. I can feel your burden. And I know that we're, we're that connected here. My heart was broken the other day. 